بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالہ اور خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈائی ود اے نیو ٹاپک بفور موونگ ان دا نیو ٹاپک آئی اپولوجائز اف یو ہیو ہیڈ اے لانگ بریک ویل ایف یو ڈو یو آئی نو دیٹ یو ہیو ناٹ ہیڈ اے لانگ بریک اٹ واز اونلی اباؤٹ اے ویک بٹ آئی ہیڈ اے ویری لانگ بریک لاسٹ ٹائم آئی ریکارڈیڈ اے ویڈیو واز آن ایٹینتھ فیبرری اینڈ ٹو ڈائی اٹس ٹوینٹی فورتھ مارچ سو دیٹس اے ویری لانگ بریک فار می and that was uh, one thing the next thing is that the coronavirus is you know uh, uh, spreading extremely fast so you have to keep yourself safe and 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 how do you do that you uh, you don't go outside what do you have to do outside nothing just stay in your home just enjoy play games uh, you know uh, do your study you know take your online classes and of course fly some kites as well just as i do and if you have to go outside you have to wear a mask you keep a sanitizer with yourself so that you are safe okay this is now becoming very dangerous uh, 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 firstly we used to hear that that particular person had the coronavirus and, and over there a person and over there now we are seeing it in our neighborhood in our homes in our locality we know each and every one we know different people who are suffering now from this coronavirus and we know how dangerous it could be so anyways this is not a medical science class this was just to tell you that you have to you know keep yourself safe keep others safe as well and remember mean your prayers as well okay so anyways coming to the topic coming to the new topic the new topic is the four year transform the first heading and i have given is the continuous time four year transform now i this i wrote you know to, to save me a time so that i could have the the talk that i did so anyways coming to the topic now to develop a background first the topic that we discussed before this was a four year series I told you that was the very basic. So in this particular topic, we may not go into that sort of a detail. We would just be applying what we have previously studied. So why did we start Fourier series? The main objective was that we were fed up of using one standard signal again and again. We wanted to represent our signal in any other terms and that term that we used were the complex exponential signals so what did we did we represented our signal in terms of complex exponential signals right we've seen that in the continuous time case we've seen that in the discrete time case that was it but but what was the limitation of that till now that we've seen The limitation that we've seen till now is that the Fourier series representation was only valid for periodic signals only, right? So now, what, what, what if we have a periodic signals and we want to represent them in terms of complex exponential signals? What is the solution? The solution is yes. You are right here at the solution. The solution is the Fourier transform. To represent periodic signals in terms of complex exponentials, you have Fourier series. To represent non-periodic signals or aperiodic signals in terms of complex exponential signals, we have Fourier transform. That's it. That is it. That is just the simple idea. Now, if you can represent periodic signal as well in terms of complex exponentials if you can and and if you can also represent a periodic in terms of complex exponential what is the difference what is the difference so the difference again i've written we've seen that the periodic signals the complex exponentials were harmonically related to each other and what do harmonically related mean so that you know very well You know it very well. I do not need to explain it again. If I tell it in a single line, I would say that they have one period in common. They may have different fundamental periods, but they have one period common. That is the thing. We know this very well till here. For a periodic signal, what do we have? The complex exponentials are infin infinitesimally close in frequency, but they are not harmonically related. They are not harmonically related. 
and infinitesimally close in frequency so this term infinitesimally check out the spelling i've written it uh, i may be wrong this means very 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 small so which means that the complex exponentials are very close in frequency to each other in case of the aperiodic signals we'll see them just in a while fine Coming to the development of the Fourier transform to the mathematical tool or whatever the, the formula etc. We have to first listen to Fourier. What do Fourier say? What is the main idea of this? The main concept, the main concept behind this Fourier transform is that Fourier reasoned that any aperiodic signal, any aperiodic signal can be viewed as a periodic signal with infinite period with infinite period and that is the main point that is the main developmental background of Fourier transform that any aperiodic non-periodic signal can be viewed as a periodic signal of an infinite period that is it so what would we have? We would consider that in that a periodic signal to be periodic. So then for periodic we have the Fourier series representation. We would find the Fourier series. Then we would do what? We would take the limit to be infinite of the time period. We will increase the time period. And as we increase the time period and we approach it to infinite, that would become the Fourier transform of that signal. And that is what it is. Simple as it seems. Fine. So let's get going. The thing starts, the derivation starts from this periodic square wave. We've seen this very well, right? You know this very well. We've already derived equations for it. This was T1, right? This was a negative T1. These two points also T plus T1, T minus T1, right? This is a T plus t1 this is a t minus t1 similarly on this side as well you can do it yourselves we know it very well we derive the Fourier coefficients a k in this particular manner in this particular manner fine the the relation I've written as well for k not equal to 0 for k equal to 0 and but I think I have made them very close to each other let me draw them again okay let me draw them again so that we could have an explanation a proper explanation this is my ak axis still you know I have not drawn them proper but they are fine enough so what did we saw we saw that the difference that the difference the spacing between the gap between two consecutive harmonic components was equal to omega naught so if this is at zero this was located at omega naught this was at two omega naught basically this axis was what this axis was k omega naught we know this very well the difference in between any two any two is omega naught okay any two consecutive fine now what do i have if i increase the time period if i increase the time period is increased so what would this imply this would imply if i draw another signal over here so maybe if this is the original if i do if i draw it okay let's say i draw it so if this was previously like this, now this is over here, this is over here. So this has become the T, now this has become negative. So if the time period is increased, this would imply what? That the, that the fundamental frequency, of course, omega naught would decrease. Which means that the Fourier coefficients would become close to each other. The Fourier series coefficients will come close to each other so if this was originally the graph for t is equal to 4 times t1 we took so 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 the next word i'm not drawing them over here they would then be lying closer to each other let's say i draw if if i draw them over here so 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 something you could draw the same graph when they are closer to each other 
you increase the time period more the omega naught would decrease further they would come more close to each other now the case comes now what does it say if the time period increase so this could also say that if ak are the samples right they are the samples so if you are increasing the time period the sampling is increasing if if so this also says what that more sampling okay okay and and you know this no problem so the the final and the important case is that if the if the time period approaches infinity ak would approach the envelope and what is that envelope this is that envelope I've not drawn them properly this is just a sinusoidal wave you could draw it yourself in a more proper manner this I would say is an envelope so if the time period is increased to infinity if the time period approaches infinity this would imply the fundamental period approaches to zero the fundamental frequency approaches zero which means that the gap overlaps the gap vanishes the gap vanishes or you could say that the Fourier series coefficients overlap each other or you could say that the AK, the Fourier series coefficients, they they do what? They reach the envelope. What what they approach the envelope? They approach the envelope. And one other thing that we have been using the scale omega naught was a discrete axis because we were using discrete values of omega naught, one omega naught, two omega naught, three omega naught. But what happens? Omega naught has approached zero. K multiplied with a very small number, a discrete variable would now result in a continuous variable, and we would replace k omega naught by a simple omega, I believe yes so the discrete time the discrete variable k omega naught would uh, changes into a continuous time uh, into a continuous variable and that is omega that is omega and where do i write it i would write it over here that the discrete variable k omega naught changes to a continuous variable omega i believe it is clear what i have said till here this was just a basic introduction what would happen if the time period is increased what would happen if it approaches infinity the gap would vanish, they would overlap each other, they would approach the envelope and the discrete variable k omega naught would now be replaced by a continuous variable named omega. Let me remove the board and we, we move on further then. Fine. Okay. Now what do we do is consider the finite duration a periodic signal. So we are given a signal. Let's say I consider and I don't write the a periodic signal and this and that. I just write a that consider this signal. If this is my t axis, this is my x of t axis, a signal something like this. They have just shown a finite duration signal and they have not shown it straight to, you know, not confuse it with a periodic square wave. Nothing else. This is zero and we have T1. We have a negative T1. What is the definition of the signal is given? X of T is equal to zero for the magnitude of T greater than one. Okay. So what do we have to do is we have to take the, uh, wait, yes, we want to represent this in terms of complex exponentials. So what do we mean by that? We need to know the Fourier series representation. And this is an aperiodic signal, so we need to know the Fourier transform of this signal. 
anyways implementing the idea of Fourier starting off with simple terms what do we do we would consider its periodic version we would consider its periodic version let me I draw it let me draw it over here if this is my t axis this is my axis of the function let's say this was the function right so if this was your t1 this was your negative t1 uh, now this would be located over here and let's say this is my time period t similarly over here i'm not drawing it proper i don't know but this is negative t and similarly this would repeat at this side this would repeat at this side and let's say i name it i name it an x hat of t x hat of t is that okay till here we have any periodic signal we have uh, made its periodic version now what do we do x of t if you see if you see they are equal in some interval they are equal in some interval and what is that interval that is this interval isn't it like this isn't it like this and what could i represent this point i could represent this point by a capital t by 2 i could represent this point by a negative t by 2 isn't it like this so what does this mean that they are equal for one period x hat of t is the periodic version of x of t let me write it over here is the periodic version of x of t right and what do we have they are equal in one period x of t x hat of t are equal in one period i could say i could say that x of t is one period of x hat of t and isn't it so it is another point that we have learned from here fine now as we have a look have a look if uh, if I increase the period of this wave this is zero otherwise right if I increase the period of this wave so won't this signal and that signal become equal for a longer period of time yes because this is zero otherwise so if this t happens to be somewhere here out of the board this negative t happens to be somewhere over here so in this particular region in this particular region won't the signal be equal again it would be so which means that if time period is increased the signals would be equal for a longer value of time if write it t is increased x of t and x hat of t will be equal for a longer time isn't it like this now another conclusion another conclusion what happens if the time period approaches infinity what would happen yes you're right if the time period approaches infinity the two signals become equal the two signals become equal and let me write it over here the ideal case is that if time period approaches infinity this would imply the two signals are equal for all the time which means that we don't know when would this t occur this t would occur at infinity this negative t would occur at a negative infinity the signal would remain zero in this particular interval so doesn't it mean that this signal and this signal both would be the same if time period is approached to infinity it would be and that is it that is it so you make these two signals equal we have come to our point back so <coughs> sorry what do we have now let me write i the fourier series right so the fourier series of x hat of t would be what 
the Fourier series of x hat of t from the synthesis equation this would imply that x hat of t is equal to summation k running from negative infinity to positive uh, a k exponential of j k omega naught t right and a k again we know from the analysis equation a k would be a 1 upon t integration over one period x of x hat of t the signal is x hat of t right exponential of negative j k omega naught t dt isn't it like this it is now what do we do if you see if you see so this signal is existing uh, this x hat of t you could say that this is existing from a negative t by 2 to positive t by 2 x of t isn't it the same this is existing this sorry sorry the integration over one period sorry leave that point x of x hat of t if you have to take integration over one period so let's say i take the limits from negative t by 2 to positive t by 2 fine so i could write what that my a k and this is the wrong pin a k is equal to 1 upon t the integration i take from negative t by 2 to positive t by 2 x hat of t into exponential of negative j k omega naught t dt now have a look to the next point in this limit negative d by 2 to positive d by 2 x hat of t is equal to x of t i replace it over here so my a k would become what my a k is equal to 1 upon t the negative t by 2 to positive t by 2 x of t exponential of negative j k omega naught t dt now another point another point is that we don't have any concept of negative t by 2 to positive t by 2 in this particular case of x of t so can i not say as this function is zero otherwise so can i not replace the limits again by a negative infinity to positive infinity so yes i can yes i can this implies what then my ak has become equal to one upon t integration from a negative infinity to positive x of t exponential of negative jk omega naught t and this is with respect to t and let's keep this relation in our mind how have i done this you write it yourself because the function is zero otherwise because x of t is zero otherwise so we can change the limits now now what do you have so let's say i uh, now i introduce another function say i introduce another function that is an envelope function say envelope function envelope function and i replace it by capital x inside the bracket i have a j omega so x of j omega is this particular thing integration is integration included yes integration from negative infinity to positive infinity x of t exponential of negative j k omega naught t and just give me a second okay exponential of negative j k omega naught t and with respect to t so this i i gave it a new name envelope function because the book had named it basically this is our very own fourier transform equation this is the Fourier transform equation. I, I named it FT in a shortcut. Anyways, let's go back over there. So my AK would become what? AK would become a 1 over T into X of J omega. Won't it be like this? Yes, it would be. And wait a minute, wait a minute i have a mistake k omega naught k omega naught i replace by a continuous variable omega i have to replace this by continuous variable omega right so 
AK I could write over there at JK omega naught. In the AK I write the same thing. X of J K omega naught. So I am writing this at omega is equal to wait, 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 J omega T. Yes, J omega T. So I have to replace this, right? J omega T. Now, if I have to take the sample Fourier coefficient a k, so that would be equal to that would be equal at omega is equal to k times omega naught. So now this is fine. Now the next thing, coming back to uh, uh, the original equation, the original equation. If I name the synthesis equation as one, so if this was named as one. So I put this value of ak over there. So my 1 implies what? My 1 implies that my x hat of t would be equal to summation k running from negative infinity to positive 1 upon t uh, x of j k omega naught into an exponential of j k omega naught t. Isn't it like this? It is. Now we know that. Uh, Omega naught is equal to what? Uh, uh, 2 pi upon t, right? We know that omega naught is equal to 2 pi upon t. So basically over here we have 1 upon t. So which means 1 upon t is uh, uh, equal to what? 1 upon t is equal to omega naught by 2 pi, right? This implies that 1 upon t is omega naught by 2 pi. Yes, so what do we have now if I put them over here? Yes, we have to put them over here. So my x hat of t would become equal to 1 upon uh, 2 pi would be outside the integration because that is a constant. So this implies what? Then my x hat of t is equal to 1 upon 2 pi summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity x of j k omega naught. And, and, and the exponential of j k omega naught exponential of j k omega naught t right so yes now what do you have increase the period so so in this is the Fourier series uh, uh, the Fourier series representation, right? So in this case, what do we have to do? We have to increase our period. So increase the period and see what happens when t approaches infinity now in this particular relation we have to increase the period and see what happens when t approaches infinite so have a look have a look in this particular case first of all first of all when t approaches infinity we already know that x hat of t would become equal to x of t this is the very first thing that x hat of t becomes equal to x of t right the next thing is omega naught approaches to zero we know that very well as well omega naught approaches uh, approaches uh, wait 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 zero and we have already seen again that your k times omega naught this would approach to a continuous variable omega this we have also seen and the summation so we see that the discrete variable has converted into a continuous variable so the summation would convert to integration and that is it so now what do i have i would write over here that my x of t i am writing this equation x hat of t has become equal to x of t i have 1 upon 2 pi summation has become equal to integration negative infinity to positive infinity x of k omega naught has become equal to omega j omega exponential of j omega t and dt would become the we have the integration so the integration would be with respect to t that is t maybe i missed an omega over here you check it in your book we have got another equation and this basically is the equation what 
This basically is the equation for inverse Fourier transform. Inverse Fourier transform. Again, as we had synthesis and analysis equations in the continuous time Fourier series, we have them again over here. This is the synthesis equation. This is the synthesis equation of Fourier transform. This one is the analysis equation of Fourier transform and please do check it in the book. This is also known as the forward Fourier transform and these two, these two are known as the Fourier transform pair. Fine? Basically, what is the meaning of Fourier transform? So basically, we do what we have to, you know, see the frequency domain analysis. Fourier, trans uh, uh, Fourier transform is the frequency domain analysis of the signal, right? So if you have to, uh, you know, go from the, uh, wait, where is it? I've written it somewhere over here, yes. Uh, if you have to go from x of t, if you have to go from the time, uh, 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 wait, x of t to x of j omega. If you have to go from the time domain to the frequency domain, what do you have to do? You have to use this equation. You have to do the, the Fourier transform, right? And similarly, if you have to go from the frequency domain into the time domain, so for this you would use the inverse Fourier transform. And these two, the Fourier transform, inverse Fourier transform, these relations are basically known as the Fourier transform pair. All right, and one thing again, one thing that I have written is that this Fourier transform is generally a complex number. Fourier transform is a complex number. So I would write over here Fourier transform is a, we would basically see it from the examples, you would understand it in a much better way, but we have to write it over here. So Fourier transform is a complex number, which means that x of j omega has some magnitude, the magnitude of x of j omega, and it has some phase, so the phase of x of j omega. So this is what it is. The units, of course, you know the units, you could also, uh, sometimes it is written as x of j omega, as I've written over here, so in this case, the units are radian per second. If it is simply written in terms of x of omega, again the units are radian per second. But some cases you are given x of f in terms of frequency. So in that case the, the, the units would be hertz. And that is it about the introduction and the development of Fourier transform. See you in the next lecture very soon inshallah. Continuing this topic. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.